Hello everyone, Anthony here with the third episode of creating a blockchain from scratch, a modular blockchain from scratch rather, where we um, create a complete production ready blockchain from the ground up in Golang. Uh, just before we continue, uh, guys, if you feel that the volume is too low or um, yeah, the, the, the type, um, the screen size is too low or something, just uh, let me know in the comments so I can adjust this. Uh, adjust it because otherwise I um, keep recording those videos with um, scuffed setup so uh, please let me know so I can work on that I'm also thinking of creating uh, maybe a discord channel uh, where we can discuss uh, how this project should evolve in the future because right now it's just me dumping my ideas into this project but uh, I'm, I'm happy to collaborate I'm happy I'm, I'm, I'm open for other uh, implementations or the design ideas whatever um, it's always good to collaborate and to discuss ideas and um, bring value to other people why not why not so let's get started so the previous episodes we created our local transport we set up the project we also um, started to create the blocks and transactions uh, the basic the basics of it but uh, right now it's time uh, for our key pairs I think that would be a good session today because the reason for this is let me quickly um, go to my project here we are okay cool I'm in uh, first of all first of all very important so what I did I put everything into github the link is in this description and I made it so that um, git tag you can see there are two tags episode one and episode two so if you want to follow along especially for uh, example episode one you can check out that tag and you should only have that contents and the same for episode two so uh, i hope that helps a bit okay cool so right now we have core network and types um, i think in order to generate private keys public keys and addresses which is very important because i'm going to show you where we started let's go transaction so our transaction basically needs to be signed it's very important it needs to be the signatures needs to be verified and so on and also I'm planning to add a field like from which should be an address type and for now we don't have that address type so that's all the good stuff we're gonna do today so let's get started I'm gonna create a folder I'm gonna call it crypto and in this folder I'm gonna make um, something generic key pair key pair can go cool so package crypto crypto like this let's start with um, a private key we also need a public key like this and we need a signature it's also a struct what do we need more uh, private key public key signature I think that should be it um, for crypto there are a lot of things we can do we can use a lot of algorithms but I think uh, ECDSA um, it's pretty standard pretty safe so we should use that um, the thing is uh, we're gonna make it so generic that people can basically create their own implementations or their own algorithms into this chain but for now I think ECDSA would be a good candidate so private key we're gonna instead of using those uh, ECDSA keys itself we're gonna wrap them and the reason for this is uh, so we can call we can add additional functions we need um, the same for this ECDSA should be a public key yes and um, first of all let's create a test file for this so we can play around because uh, key pair test go cool do this um, key pair Test generate private key. Why not? Let's call it like this. Testing 
see. Okay, so how is this gonna work? Uh, first of all, I'm gonna make a function generate private key like this. I'm not really a big fan of TDD, but it, I'm doing some something hybrid to be honest. Um, TDD is just I don't know. It, it's it's definitely something that has value, but uh, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a hybrid version of it. Um, generate private key returns a private key. I think it's ECDS8 and generate key. What does it need? A curve and a random readers. Elliptic. I think this one is good. And then for the error, we're not gonna return it because the 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 thing is, if this fails, it's just simply generating a key. If this fails, we fucked. So it uh, the we just panic. We just panic. And then we're gonna return the private key. And the key is the key. What is going on? The value of key is never used. Yeah, of course, man, please. Um, I'm garbage. Panic. Cool. For the public key, we're gonna do something like, uh, let's call it K, private key, public key, uh, public key. This is not true. Public key like this. So we're gonna wrap it. Stop. And yeah, key. And that's gonna be k fund public key. Hmm. All right. Cool. That's that. Basically, we can say priv key is uh, to generate private key, pub key is priv key from public key. All right, and then we should do something like address is pub key print address, All right? Like this, but that doesn't exist, so that's what we're gonna make. And we're gonna uh, do this for now. Cool. So let's make this function public key and func. That should return types and address, but it's not existing. So do this. Open up this and go to types. We have hash, so we can choose. We can do it in the same folder, or we can make a new one. I think it's better to make a new one. We call it address. But go. Package types type address. Uh, instead of a thirty too long. Uh, inside integer, we're gonna do a 21. We went eight. Uh, yeah, key pair. Types and address, okay, it's not important. NTM. Project X. Types. And the way we're gonna return an address is basically, there are a lot of ways we can do, but we're gonna just uh, do a SHA 256 and then take the last 20 bytes, something similar to Ethereum, but not quite yet. Um, so let's say we hash it. Uh, 
this. We need the bytes. Um, let's make a function. Come on, please. Go to the key. To slice. Because if you see, I'm going to show you how it looks. So inside of this public, this key, I cannot show it, I guess. Yeah, like this key has a curve and it has an X and a Y value, which is a big int. So we need to have the bytes. There is no way we can access it right now. So we need to do something like, as long as I remember, um, there is something called like elliptic, but Marshall, I guess. Marshall compressed. What does it need? A curve and then those values. Okay, cool. The curve could be the key itself because it's embedded. Print x and okay, print p, print y. And what is this? It is a byte. Okay, cool. So actually, we can do this. Easy. So we're gonna hash this thing. Okay, slice. That should be this. So we need, what do we need? Let me think. Uh, from, okay, I think we need, wait, let me just, yeah, it's a little bit complex sometimes, I know. Um, so we could do H L N. Wait. I'm confused, I'm confused. Bro. Let me quickly think. It's so hard to speak and think at the same time. It's insane. Um, we need to wait. Let's just copy some things over, like uh, a address, a slice. It's basically the same as hash. So let's yank it. A lot of boilerplate, I know. We also need uh, from bytes. Which is a byte slice, make it an address. Exactly the same as hash. Well, not exactly the same, but. And that's the only downside of Go. If you could have like a macro where you could generate codes at compile time, you can basically generate all these things and you don't need to do anything. Um, and this is address. And now, if you go to key pair, you can do something like um, types, print new address from bytes, and we take h len h minus 20, and we're Gucci. So it sounds, it sounds a little bit complex, but it's basically what we do is we grab the bytes of the public key, uh, which is two slice, we hash it, and then we just take the last, uh, we create a new address with the, uh, I don't like new address to be honest. I like more, because new is more something for constricting things. This is like address from bytes, I like this more. And then we basically uh, create the address from the given bytes, and that should be our address. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. 
So if we open up GKR here and our test here, then we could use something like this, this, and then print the address out. Uh, this. Cool. I'm gonna just do this. Okay, cool. So this is our address. So right now, what we want to do is make it more readable. Go to our address back again and implement a function, a string function, uh, address string. Now, if we do this again, okay, cool. This is our address. The only thing uh, what we need to do is append. You don't need to append zero x on front. It's it's syntactic sugar. It doesn't matter. It's it's completely useless. So that should be our address, um, as far as I'm concerned, to be honest. Yeah, that should be it. That should be it. That should be it. We should be good chilling. So let's open up key pair once again. Key pair. We can generate a private key, we can derive the public key, we can derive the address. So now, and that's exactly the reason why we basically uh, wrap these functions, these ECDSA functions, is for signing things. Um, where is my private key? Here. What we're gonna do is say private key sign. Um, we want to sign, we want to sign data, which is a byte, and we're going to return a signature and an error, because this case is different, because our internal application will sign a lot of things, and if we then panic, that's, that's bad, because we don't want to stop the application when we sign things. If it fails, that's uh, that's not Gucci. So we need to catch that error and act accordingly. Sign. So how does this work? I think it's something like uh, wait. I'm gonna do A C D S A. Can sign and see what it needs. A rand, a priv key, and a hash. Uh, rand and reader. K print key data and what does it return okay or s hash if hash if we fail we return the error and if we don't fail we return a signature right return signature no error. Okay, signature is blank. We need the S, the R, which is uh, pointed to a big dot int. Yeah. And um, while we do this, yeah, okay, cool. So we can sign. Let's do this. Let's make a message. There's a byte. Uh, hello. Once again, then we say priv key consign the message, which returns a sig error. Then we can say assert print null e -ash. So we have the signature. Let's print it right now. We don't need the address for now. Don't need a puppy for now. Let's print it. Our signature is right here, so that seems to be working. We're gonna test it. No worries, no worries. After signing, I want to basically verify. And verify something we're gonna add onto the signature. We need a puppy. Puppy, please. Yeah. Is a public key. We need the data. There's a 
verified and we're returnable. So verify is just gonna tell us is this signature valid? Given a public key and of course the message, um, the data. Let's see what ECDS Open Verify does because I don't know this on the top of my head. So we need publicly hash and then these things, okay. So we return this. Key. Data. Seek.r and seek.s. Okay. So then we say. Um, we assert true because we are assuming that there's a valid signature uh, that the signature print verify with the uh, public key which is here pub key uh, and the data which is the message is true let me test holy shit Big trouble. Uh, wait. So, um, well, privately and publicly. Then this, yeah. Well, well. The thing is, no, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay. Um, okay. Now we are encountering our first issue. Um, And now, I'm choking, I'm choking, boys, I'm choking. Sigpint verify, uh, let me just do this. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a debug thing, so I could skip this video and come back with a solution, but let's just... Um, yeah, it doesn't matter to print this, to be honest, because... should be true so we have our private key we generate a private key we do this perfect panic private key if we want to call the public key we return a new public key with this thing which is the key and then we to slice I don't think it matters too much the signature SR I think maybe oh. okay yeah yeah <laughs> okay guys see so the thing is I don't want to basically um, and that's the that's the thing right so I'm gonna teach you guys something I'm gonna teach you a classic mistake so what I did is this you know as an R and actually it doesn't matter I can swap these in it doesn't matter but look at this now look at this you see this RS this is working but the best practice in Go is to basically always always do this instead of what we had we need to do always explicitly say what is R and explicitly say what is S and you could think why do we need to do this it well exactly because this is more code and it looks garbage I know but the issue we had is exactly why we didn't that thing exactly that exactly that 
So right now we can swap these in no matter what, it doesn't matter because we make it explicit right here. And I know this, you see, I, I, I know this and I still don't do it just because I thought, well, RNS, how, I mean, it's simple. Why, why should we do this exactly there? So, okay, so right now, and I hope I don't, okay, so you see, this is working fine. Um, we solved it. Actually, a good. I'm so happy that this happened. I was at, exactly at the point stopping the video and fix it myself and come back with the solution. But uh, I'm so happy I didn't do it because these mistakes, man, please do this. Okay, we're gonna clean this a little bit up. We're gonna make a function test uh, sign. Wait, test. Uh, wait, what's the key pair? Sign and verify. Okay. Test generate. I think should we test this thing? I don't. I, I mean, it doesn't really matter to be honest because it generates or it, gen it doesn't. So, okay. First of all, brief key is going to be generate new brief key. Public key. This message wait we're not gonna do stupid things let's make something um, yeah just do our world who cares and then we say brief key sign um, the message Why do I make this? Why do I do this? Public key and the message. And we go back to our normal terminal like this. Make, make tests. Okay, everything is working. And then now we basically um, test, sign, verify, success. Valid, maybe, and um, I'm thinking how I should do this. To be honest, let's just sign, verify. Uh, yeah, just this. It, it doesn't matter. I'm just thinking if this actually works. Doing those underscores, if it brings value, but I don't think it does. Um, sign. Verify, fail. Um, a couple, couple ways we can test this. So let's do. We sign it, but we're gonna verify it with a with a different public key. So let's do other. We generate a new one. Other. Oh man, other public key is this, and then we can say uh, instead of verifying with the actual one, we're gonna do with the other. Yeah, and that should be false. And we don't need this. Yeah. Okay, it's passing. And the next thing we could do is. Um, What could we do? We could do something like do this. Now we need this public key back. Public key. All right. And then we're going to verify this with the correct public key, but we're going to give it a um, wrong message. 
um, something completely different. So that should be false edif, I hope. Okay, this is it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm, <laughs> I'm confused. I thought, why is this test, <laughs> why is this test uh, succeeding? Why is it okay? Uh, but it should be okay. Uh, okay, cool. So I think signing and uh, verifying is good. So we are at 30 minutes into the video, which is um, amazing. And um, we are actually done uh, with this thing. So let's recap. So what did we do? So we made a private key. Actually, we made a file key pair where we uh, can generate private keys. We can uh, derive a public key. We can derive from that public key, we can derive our addresses. And we can sign arbitrary data and we can verify along with the pub key if, the, if that pub key basically signed that data. It's very important. It's the basics of, um, it's the building blocks of, 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 of blockchains. So let's recap in the folders here. Can we do something else real quick? We still have some couple minutes if we really want or we quit this. Not quite sure. Let's open up transaction real quick. Um, so maybe for, I'm thinking for the next episode, I think we're gonna expand our transaction and block, token block alongside. We're gonna expand this a little bit. We're gonna um, engineer, code our way into adding transactions into blocks, verifying everything. Maybe we should start making, I don't know, I don't, we, we will start expanding bl uh, blocks and transactions so we can uh, validate blocks and, and everything. And then we should have a good base to go back to our server object, which is this one, where we can actually try to create another module, which should be the RPC handler, which is uh, a, speci a specific object that will only um, it's re that will be only responsible for um, handling RPC messages and passing it along the other modules. And then we can basically create blocks, create transactions and put it into blocks. And, uh, and then I think we already have a very, very good portion of what we want to build. Um, yeah, so this is it. Guys, uh, again, if you like this video, please uh, like it on YouTube. Um, and subscribe to the channel it, it uh, i appreciate this a lot it uh, it helps me a lot and um yeah share the love and see you into the next one peace